but I was, you know, just grew up with idolizing these guys, you know, Timmy Carlisle was like my freaking hero, you know, Jeffrey Carden is my, you know, one of my heroes, Jose Wahebe, Flip, you know, all these guys. I was so lucky to grow up in that golden era where things were exploding after a river runs through it. And I was just a kid soaking it all up, you know, and, and I think that, you know, I just challenged myself to, to get good and to explore and to try to figure it out. And, um, and I've always loved kind of going the opposite direction or the opposite grain. So it was always nice when I'd read something in Lefty Craze Fishing the Flats with Mark Sosin, or I'd read, you know, Stu App's book or whatever, and I read them all. And it would say, oh, this is how you do it, and this is what's up. And then I'd find some other way to do it that right. was better. Right. <laughs> and I lived for that. Well, they were, they were older. <laughs> right. I mean, the, the innovations today are right. so profound. And I think that, you know, when it got to permit – that was like, that was to me was, was just, I, I think about what was going on in my head when I first started to say, all right, I want to get good at permit. You know, this is, this is a fish that's sexy. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's incredibly difficult. People have had limited success and I, and I refuse to accept that. So I'm going to just look at it and challenge myself to do it differently or to try to figure it out. And once I started breaking it down and, you know, getting a lot better at catching these i found myself doing things that were radically different than than anything that i had ever read and what was that first just difference from where you fish them when you fish them how you throw to them what angle you're taking on them what retrieve you're using the style of fly that you're using every single thing that i was doing uh leading up to the first win that i had i think down here was in 180 degrees difference than everything i'd ever read is fly design a very important factor? Not as much as people think. You can get them to eat anything. You know. It's so what's the key to getting them to eat? Um, uh, I'm reluctant. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, I just had this conversation recently with Tim Mahaffey about big downtown bonefish, and he's won as uh, not at the most, but he's won all the big bonefish tournaments, and and yeah. his methodology was so different than anyone else i think there's there's a approach um i would say it's a combination of things right like everything it's there's no one answer right? right uh but i would say that there's a few things first of which is um you know permit are real real smart they learn they're conditioned animals so if you're fishing to the same fish that you fished for three days in a row you're not going to catch them Stop going to the spot that you see them all the time. Start finding out where fresh they, fish. Yeah, yeah, you got to do that. That's straight up, you know, and and just so that, and then taking fundamentally different approaches. I see a lot of guides pulling real hard on these fish, pushing hard, pushing water pushes. You know, I am so thankful to Steve Huff and Dell for developing uh, a sport that I love, that's paid my mortgage, that's made a great life for me. But I do take uh, uh, issue with his statement of saying that it's, you know, the permits, you know, not a fair fish, you know, it doesn't play fairly. And I, I would challenge anybody that's kind of bought into that uh, to say, you know, is it is it the fish or is it me? Because I think if you turn around and say, well, you know, it's not fair. Well, have you been there for the last, you know, week on the same tide? Is the fish exhibiting feeding behavior? You know, what's going on? Are you really fishing for that fish ex at the exact moment when he's most likely or she is most likely to eat the fly? I think if you start peeling back the layers a little bit, you'll see that there's a the, the permit's a far more complex animal and that it requires an enormous uh, amount of attention to detail and to thought and to observation to really get inside its head uh, and to... I guess push back on that statement a little bit. It's totally a fair fish. Well, I so think, if you, you know, if you if you're saying if you get all the details correct and all the stars align, you're gonna get a bite out of that. They're permit. catchable. They're totally. They're very, very, very catchable. I don't say. Listen, some days they're just hard, you know. But then you get to say, well, look, okay, it's this this moon in October. There's these kind of conditions, you know. They're doing this, you know. Is this week the week to catch them? Maybe not. Maybe they're pre-spawning. Maybe they're doing something else. Maybe they're eating something that, you know, is different than what you're throwing. You know, there's a lot of and critters. They're exclusive to that. They're meal. exclusive to this. Right. So you're saying, oh, it's not fair. Well, you're, you're, 
you know, you're not. They're fair. You're just you're not just you're just an their idiot, fairness. right? You're right. just throwing the wrong thing at them all the time, right? You know, so get over yourself. Stop thinking that you're right. You know, so yeah. I think permit fishing benefits a mindset that um, is kind of locked in. It's about numbers. You know, so I hear so many people say, you know, if I get this many shots on this conversion ratio, it'll equal this many fish. And so I'm always kind of adjusting the numbers, right? It's kind of like, you know, how the Red Sox won the the, the World Series back then. It was kind of by the numbers, you know, mm-hmm. Theo Epstein did right. that crunching of the numbers and the data played out, right? right. Uh, that's a very good way to get good at permit fishing, uh, but it is not getting to the the holy grail there to really understand that it's about chemistry you got to get inside the fish's head and you need to be flexible you need to be maneuverable you need to be able to come off of that in key strategic ways at the right time to unlock some mysteries that i still think are out there that a lot of people haven't realized what's the miss the biggest mystery that you're trying to find the code to at this point i think that we have a lot of changes in our habitat and I think if you look at the what they're eating, um, they're eating some different things than what we think. But let's so, just say they're eating something that we don't know about, but you present a nice, beautiful crab. Do you think that they're going to stay exclusive to what they're eating? So in some places at some times of the year, yes. They won't eat that crab. They will not. Even though you got a great presentation and a great feed. Correct. What's the greatest new innovation that you know? <laughs> 